Hi, everybody. This uh, screen share is for your uh, Hungry Beagle activity. So this screen share, as I go through each one of these, it should um, help you answer the first page of questions, the second page of questions, and then the fourth page of questions. And for the third page of questions, I'll do another screen share with you. So let's go ahead and go through this. I'll read it to you. Welcome to the Carbon Cycle movie. This movie has five scenes. While exploring this movie, you will learn about carbon storage, carbon cycle, carbon land cycle, carbon water cycle, combustion, and deforestation. Carbon storage scene one. I understand that carbon is found in many places on earth. You're right, Evelyn. Carbon is the key element in all living things such as plants, animals, and humans. Carbon is found nearly everywhere on earth. Should we try to name all the places? Sure, let's see if we can do it. I'll start. I know from our discussion on climate change that carbon is found in the atmosphere in the gas carbon dioxide. Carbon is also found in fossil fuels stored in the ground. It's in certain kinds of rocks and shells of animals as well. Carbon is also part of the soil and is dissolved in water, such as oceans and lakes. Finally, carbon is stored in plants and trees. <clears throat> we did it, Tyler. We named all the places where carbon exists. Yes, but now comes the tricky part learning how carbon moves between these locations. Carbon cycle, scene two. Wow, carbon moves in so many directions. Maybe it would be easier to explain if we just show either the land or water portion of the carbon cycle first. Which one would you like to start with, land or water? Let's start with land. Okay, land it is. Carbon land cycle, scene three. Plants and trees use carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through photosynthesis. Plants store carbon as they grow. That's right. However, plants also release carbon to the atmosphere through a process called respiration. When plants and trees die, they decompose and become part of the soil. After long periods of time, some of this matter is compacted and transformed into fossil fuels such as oil and coal. Now, let's look at the carbon cycle in water. Carbon water cycle, scene four. Through a process called diffusion, gases containing carbon move between the ocean surface and the atmosphere. I see, so plants in the ocean must use carbon dioxide from the water for photosynthesis. Ocean plants store this carbon just like land plants. Then, ocean animals eat these plants to get the carbon they store. Ocean plants and animals release carbon dioxide back into the water through respiration. When ocean plants and animals die, they decompose in the water. The decomposing plants and animals either sink to the deep ocean and dissolve, or settle on the ocean floor where they get buried in the sediment. You covered a lot, Evelyn. I'll cover the last couple of movements. Some sea creatures can remove carbon gas from the ocean water and use it to make their shells. When these creatures die, their carbon-filled shells dissolve or settle on the ocean floor. Also, although it takes a long time for rocks to form and wear down, this process moves carbon in water. Finally, water moving between the deep ocean and the surface also carries carbon. Some of the ocean's carbon then moves from the surface to the atmosphere. Evelyn, I think we have covered it all. We have explained how the carbon cycle works on land as well as with water. The only question is, how do humans affect the carbon cycle? Let me show you. Combustion and deforestation, scene five. Humans influence the carbon cycle through many activities. For instance, we extract fossil fuels from the ground and burn them for energy so we can run cars produce electricity, and manufacture goods. Burning fossil fuels is called combustion. We also contribute to the carbon cycle through deforestation. When we cut down, or burn, cut down or burn trees, they can no longer remove carbon dioxide from the air through photosynthesis. 
when we burn wood, the carbon in them becomes carbon dioxide and enters the atmosphere. The extraction and combustion of fossil fuels and deforestation moves carbon stored in fuels and trees to the atmosphere. We know that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, so the addition of carbon to the atmosphere can contribute to global warming. It is important to understand the carbon cycle so we can see how human activities may lead to global warming. The end. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stop the video. And then I will go ahead and go over the next activity with you in another, uh, in another video.